that wasn't John's yes. thought. I just want to be clear about that. He Today is Sunday, March 24th, 2019, the third Sunday of Lent. We're pretty much coming up around the halfway point of our Lenten journey. How's your journey going? One of the things I've discovered in my own journeys of faith is that Lent is a trying time because I've made promises to myself, I've made promises to God, but I sometimes find them difficult to keep. Now, it's not that I'm a failure or anything. It's not like I haven't made progress in the spiritual journey. But sometimes when we evaluate our progress, we begin to realize that we're not doing as well as we wanted to. It doesn't mean we quit, though. I mean, we know the temptation is real. When we're not accomplishing, we feel like failures. And when we feel like failures, we have a tendency to just quit. You know, being a Catholic today, I think it's a lot harder for us because we live in a world that doesn't give credit for anybody who doesn't make their accomplishments known. I mean, think about the many conversations you have with others. How many times when you first just met somebody do you go to the simple and the common by asking, well, what do you do? I mean, the standard response has always come back. I'm an engineer, I'm a teacher, and I define myself by what I do. I mean, that's not something new, don't get me wrong. Even in biblical times, they defined, it, they defined people by what they did. That's Matthew, the tax collector. That's Jesus, the son of a carpenter. Sometimes I think it's just too easy to fall back on you are what you do. See, I'd rather be defined by a sacrament. I'm a priest. I'm a Christian. I'm a husband. I'm a wife. Well, I'm not a wife, but you get the point. How's everything? Very well. You ready for your big pupusa party? Yes, I am. Excellent. Morning, John. Hello. So how are you today? I'm good, Father. Bella's back. Good morning, Bella. Good morning. Today around the world, millions of people are going to attend Mass somewhere. Millions of people. I have a pondering, I've been pondering this morning, why be Catholic? I mean, today especially with all that's rocked the Catholic world, people being, you know, scandalized. Why be Catholic? Good morning. Good morning, Palatina. Did you even go home last night? Yes, I did. I really think this question about why be Catholic is going to be a lot tougher than I thought. Basically, uh, I'm a Catholic because I born and brought up in a Catholic family. That is the basic things, but faith and also that when it became part of my life, throughout my life, especially when I ordained as a Catholic religious priest, I understood or I believe that uh, Catholic faith is the only faith which can give the salvation because Jesus Christ himself instituted uh, the Catholic Church. So I strongly believe in that and also I am proud of being a Catholic and also a, being a Catholic religious priest. They're like, oh, well, if you're born in this country, then you'll be this religion. If you're born in this country, you'll be this religion. And it's all just a matter of location. It's not the truth. Why be Catholic? Because um, our Savior died for us, for our sins. It's the best thing in the world. Why shouldn't you be Catholic? All right, I'm back to the catechism. Today's question, why be Catholic? I be this is going to be a very tough one because in this age of relativism, there's a lot of belief out there that he's the, God is the God of all religions, that there isn't one true faith, there isn't just one church. Um, you know what, if there is a God, and the God is the belief of what you yourself want it to be. Everybody has an opinion in their life as to what they believe God Almighty is. But I wonder how many of our faithful Catholics know why they should be a Catholic, why we should encourage others, if they want to follow Jesus Christ, that it needs to be done in the Catholic Church. Why be Catholic? Catholic, it's a very strong and powerful world. Our Lord and Savior died for our sins on the cross, and it's coming up as Easter, the resurrection of our Lord. The whole first section of the Catechism basically deals with the profession of faith, the creeds that we offer every week. That creed, I think, is so important. Credo, I believe. Morning, Jan. How are you this week? I'm good. Hi, vlog. Why be Catholic? 
because we're the chosen okay wait hold on that's a little too dramatic okay why be catholic because god sent his only son jesus christ the messiah to save us from all of the wrongdoings and clear our sins so that's why we should be catholic because god literally sent his only son to save us there's a lot of talk today about evangelization and every time i think about evangelization there are so many different techniques there are so many different methodologies that are offered i for, for me though I think behind it, we have to ask certain hard questions that we're prepared to answer. Who is this Jesus Christ? Who do people say Jesus Christ is? Catholic. Why be Catholic? You've been a Catholic for how many years now? I mean, come on. Um, almost, almost, almost 84 years. Almost 84 years. Why be anything else? One of the things I should have said before, Father, was the fact that he died for us, and I can't think of a better savior. So that's why I'm Catholic. Because God sent his only begotten son to save us from all of our sins and re give us the option to like repent, reform our lives, follow his church. One of the things about being a Catholic, for, for me especially, is the privilege that I have of being able to be close to my Lord to have that personal relationship with him, to be able to live the faith in ways that I, that I can only do within the church. But here in the Catholic Church, we have the power of the Eucharist, we have the power of the sacraments, and without those sacraments, I think I would be lost. But for me, being Catholic is, um, you know, believing in Jesus, believing that Jesus died and, you know, resurrect and, I love Jesus, and uh, it's the church that he created, so uh, yeah, I just have to follow him. Um, I think for me, being Catholic, the main thing is the sacrament of the Eucharist, just being able to receive Christ every Sunday, being in the presence of him, reliving uh, the whole sacrifice, sacrificial experience. For me, that's being Catholic. You know, for those who don't believe, it's hard to explain. But the Eucharist, as a Catholic, the Eucharist is so different. It's so powerful to know that what Christ did on the cross, what he did at the Last Supper, is what we're still doing today. We're doing it in memory of him, but it's more than just a memory. It becomes real. He becomes present to us. Wow. I, you know, that alone is a reason for me to, to just stay close to Christ in the Catholic Church. And you see, all the sacraments there in the Catholic uh, Church, that is instituted by Jesus Christ, starting from the baptism onwards, because and the Eucharist, and the sacrament of reconciliation. That he sacrificed everything for me, and that because of that sacrifice, I should honor him and love him. Okay, so here's my real struggle today. I live in a world of relativism. I, even at one point in my own life, was a grand relativist. Under relativism, it's all the same no matter where you are. Everything is equal. All things are pretty much the same since we're all imperfect and we all have our problems. Yet, that's not true when we talk about the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church. There is something very different about Roman Catholicism. It's the truth. Because it's the truth? Yes, I am Catholic. Because by the meaning of the word Catholic, it is universal, the universal love of Jesus Christ. It's the best thing in the world. If you're a Catholic, try to answer this question for yourself. Why? Why are you a Catholic? Why am I a Catholic? The Catholic Church is just a phenomenal thing for, that Christ would give us. Such a beautiful gift that he's given us. Such a, a wonderful way for each and every one of us to grow closer to him. It is amazing sometimes how clear your thoughts can be when you first wake up in the morning and then how muddled they can be uh, slowly become throughout the day. Our newest secretary. Who's that? Oh. <laughs> Good morning, Luigi. How are you? Good morning, Father. How are you doing? Good. What are you selling? I'm selling pupusas.
Hey, how's it going? Pusa de queso. Pusa de queso. There should be three. Okay, I will, I will lay my hands on them. Good morning, Father Peter. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I have to admit, today has turned out to be quite the lovely day. Beautiful day indeed. We're here as Catholics. We come to worship our Lord. Every Sunday, we have millions and millions of people around the world. You know, to be a Catholic is a privilege. It's a gift. It's a very powerful thing. I find the privilege in being that I can be close to my Lord, I can be close to my Savior to the point of receiving him in the Eucharist. It doesn't get any more intimate than that. It's just a little after 12. I'm going to get ready now for the 12.30 Mass. I know that a lot of us have a lot of prayers and intentions, and I will keep your intentions in my prayers during this Mass. <laughs> <laughs> 